Mount Hermon. I'm going to read to you from Matthew 16. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am the son of man? So they said, um, Elijah, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, they think you're one of the prophets. And then the Lord says, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Simon Peter answered correctly, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus is so pleased with his answer. He said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Yes, the Lord spoke to Simon Peter and told him. And uh, Jesus continues on here. And also I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'd like to take this scripture apart a little bit for you. Golan Heights, right there. Caesarea Philippi is an area. All these have overlapping names. Um, Mount Hermon is the highest mountain in Israel, the most northern point. And um, Laish, it was later on called Laish and Dan. But it was also called um, Banyas, Panyas, Panyas before Banyas today for the god Pan. Um, the tribe of Dan, all the tribes of Israel were allotted certain land. And Dan was given the land of the Philistines. That's where Gaza is today. But you know what? The Danites found it too difficult to rout the enemy out of the land. And they picked up and they moved north. They moved to the highest point up to Caesarea Philippi, leaving the land that God had given to them. And once they made that choice, they made another further choice that was even worse. They decided it was too much trouble to go to Shiloh, or it's called Shiloh in Israel. Too much trouble to go to Shiloh and worship God there in the tabernacle. They decided to set up their own worship in Dan. Caesarea Philippi, Mount Hermon. That was a huge mistake for Dan. You know, when you make a choice like that, that's not the perfect choice. You're opening the door for Satan to come in. And that's what happened. They no longer felt it necessary to go to the tabernacle where the Shekinah glory of God dwelt to worship. They decided to worship right there at Dan, Mount Hermon. And they got involved with all the demonic religions that were going on at that place. Uh, the Book of Enoch tells us, in a very interesting point, that the angels were sent down to a planet Earth to teach mankind. And the place they landed, or went to, was Mount Hermon. But the angels sinned with humans, and the two got mixed and brought forth the demonic, brought forth evil wickedness, and evil wicked half breed, half human, half half uh, uh, angel people. Um, they did, probably didn't even feel the, the separation from God at that time. But slowly but surely, those practices became part of their own. These I'm talking about the Jews who worship God. And it led them down this wrong path. Um, at this place called Banyas or Pan, after these 
uh, ugly, wicked guys. The most wicked forces ever dwelt at Mount Hermon. And Jesus chose this very place to ask the question, who do people think I am? And they, they have a mixed answer. They don't really know. And then he decides while they're standing and they're looking at this great outcropping of rock on Mount Hermon, where within it were all the niches of the pagan gods. All these images of gods were placed in the stone. And the scripture is quite clear on that. Make no graven image out of anything. As a warning to mankind for God, from God. And here we are. The Lord stands here, Yeshua stands here with his disciples and asks who do people say that I am in front of all of this array of gods that were presented there and that were worshipped there, the most wicked of all kinds. And Simon Peter steps up to the plate and he says, you are the Messiah. And Messiah means the eternal living God who has come to earth in the form of a man. And God is very pleased with Simon Peter. And what does he say to, what does he say to him? On this rock, Peter, I will build my church. Well, let's back up a bit. Simon's, Simon Peter was never named Peter. Shimon is his name, and it comes from the word Shema, which means to hear. It means to get it, understand it, make it your own. And that's what he did. Uh, Shimon, as his real name is, got what God said, God the Father said to him about Yeshua Jesus, that you are the Messiah. He got that. So he's well named Shimon. And what, what the Lord renamed him was Cephas. Cephas. So we've been calling him Peter all this time and really his name was Cephas, the little stone. And this wasn't the first time uh, Jesus had called him that. When he first met Peter, he called him as Simon Barjona, you shall be called stone. Pebble, small rock. And on you, it says, the church would be built. I'd like to go to you to read to you really quick to Ephesians 2. This is Paul speaking. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Well, here we have all these stone images. And he's saying that the church will be built upon the apostles and the prophets. So he's not saying to Peter, you are the head of everything here. No, he's saying on this and on the words you spoke to me, uh, uh, Shimon, Cephas, <laughs> Peter, upon those words, you are the Messiah. So in other words, upon the Messiah, the church would be built. Um, Let's just look at the rock again. Is he saying upon Mount Hermon, this heavy stone, this heavy large outcropping of rock, upon you I will build my church? What is he saying? He is saying upon all the demonic forces that reign here and rule here and have got the people sold out to Satan here, upon that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So in other words, God is saying here, I have the authority over all you demon powers here. I am the I am and the gates of hell won't prevail. What does prevail mean? He was kind of foretelling his death and burial and resurrection because they all believed at that place called the gates of hell, that it was a portal to hell, which it is. But they believed that many had gone down to hell and then had come out and come back into life. But, but Yeshua Jesus is saying here, 
I will not, this place will not prevail over me. In other words, I will go down to Sheol when I'm put on the cross, but I won't stay there. And if the apostles were listening, like, like Peter, the Shema, if they were hearing that, they could have heard in that what he was saying to them. You think all these other dead people have risen from the dead? No, I, I will be the one that will be risen from the dead. They could have grasped that. So he's not saying upon the, Mount of Mount, the rock of Mount Hermon, but he's saying upon the rock of every demonic force and power, I will prevail, I will reign, I am supreme. He was putting them down at that time. Um, and then let's look at he is the rock. Messiah Jesus is the rock. Um, I've done another video on the, that rock was Christ. He was the water that followed them through the, through the wilderness. Um, and, and God himself um, is called to scriptures many things. Upon this rock, a rock of refuge, a, a rock of salvation, rock of offense. These are titles of him in the scriptures. Rock of Israel, stone. Rock of strength. Everlasting rock. And God, my rock. And then the most important one. The chief cornerstone. In 1999, my friend Ann and I volunteered in a food bank in Talpiot. It's a neighborhood of Jerusalem. And we were helping prepare food, packaging food to give out to the needy in that area. And we took the bus every day to our place of work. And we got off the bus at the bus stop. We got off. And every day I would see this rock quarry. And it was a quarry full of discarded rock, huge boulders, huge rocks that were useless because they had a crack in them or corners broken off or something was wrong in them. So these were the stones that were rejected by the builder. And I weep every day within me thinking they have, they have rejected their Messiah, thrown him in the rock quarry with the other broken rocks as being not useful, can't be used by them. Oh, it just broke my heart. But every day I could see those stones and think how they have thrown him in the rock quarry, useless to them. The builder, oh. reading to you from Psalm 118, 20, 22. The stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. You know, the cornerstone is what holds everything together. It makes a building solid and firm. The cornerstone. That's our Lord. He came to earth to be that cornerstone for us that we could build upon him. He's our rock of foundation. He's our strength. And so the Lord used this odd unbelievably demonic place to explain to him and he used it in three ways he's saying to peter you're the rock he's saying to the mountain he's the rock and he's saying to himself he is the rock he's a triplicate so you got to listen careful to figure out what he said he always used his surroundings to teach and so this time he taught who he was to his disciples are they getting it who is he he is their messiah He's preparing them, teaching them as he goes, lovingly opening up to him, showing them in different ways how they can believe who he is. And here he is telling them he's preparing them for his death and resurrection. He's preparing them to take the force of power over the demonic forces that be. And that he was going to use them to build up his kingdom, his building, his house. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, the gates of hell, once again, is an opening to Sheol. There are others. There's one at Mount uh, Moriah. Um, I don't want to get off into portals because uh, the other world uses that term as well. But these were openings to hell. And he was showing them that these monsters that were, were over this place, 
that he had the power to put down and one day will put down and they will find themselves in the lake of fire to come. Um, Revelation 1, 18. I am he who lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of Hades and death. So Jesus is saying here, I have the keys to, to uh, Hades and death. I can open and I can let loose. And he did that very thing and will continue to do in the future. He has brought people up out of the grave. Um, but to Peter, he says, and remember, I wrote to you about upon the apostles and the prophets, the church would be built. He says to Peter, but I gave you keys also. And we've gone on too far in that verse and not stopped and looked at it. He's given him the keys to life. What does that mean? When Peter understood and Peter knew and believed that when God had showed to him that this was Messiah, this eternal father God in human form was the Messiah of Israel, the promised one. And not only those, the one who will save them from their enemies, but save them from their sin and save them from death. And so he's saying, Peter, I'm, I give you the keys to life. And he says that to all of us too. I'm willing to give you the keys to life. And what is that? Believing in Messiah Yeshua. Yes, Messiah Jesus, Jesus the Christ. That is the key to life. Yes. And as we gain this key, that key to life, we then, as it says in Ephesians 6, we put on the armor of God or the armor of the high priest, whichever way you want to look at it. And what are we putting on? I, I, won't, I won't read the whole thing because I, I want to point out to you what we really receive. We receive faith that he is God, just like Peter knew, that he is God. We're, we put on, we're given righteousness, right living because we have believed. And then he's given us salvation. And when we have those two, those three things on, our armor is on, then we have the Bible, the sword of the spirit, and then we have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. In other words, we study in, in the word and we learn what it is and then we can share it with others and we can grow in ourselves. That's what the key to life is right there. Um, Reading in verse 14, 12, sorry. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, not just on the earth. That's who we fight, not one another. That's who we're warring against, taking our freedoms, taking our ability to, to have faith, righteousness, and salvation. These are the things. And because he gave us that key to life, we can then come against, what did I read you? Principalities, powers, every evil wickedness on earth and in high places that would come against you, darkness, great darkness, spiritual hosts, many, many evil things coming up against us. We can have, I don't like to use authority and the power words like that, no, but we can put them down. We don't have to endure that. We for ourselves can come out from under whatever sin we're bothered by, whatever thing that is tormenting us. Every little thing as we get to know what the Bible says about how we should behave and live and act and what is righteousness and what is salvation, what all these terms mean and, and our actions, we can say no. Out of here. No. I refuse it. I'll not be at that again. I will refuse to sin in that way. Be gone from me. So we can come up, come against those things. We, we have that ability. Uh, are we doing it? Or do we like our sin? Are we entertaining it? Have you ever done something and all of a sudden you start feeling awful about it? 
you feel like you've done something terrible and you're upset about it or you hurt someone or something, that's the Holy God, God giving you a, a, in, your, a, in your spirit the idea that something needs to change. So do we just live with it and do it again? Or do we say, hey, wait a minute, something needs to change here. That's where we have this power. We can change. We can get rid of those things in our life and do better. Yeah, we can. Um, back to Mount Hermon for a moment. Because he chose that amazingly awful place, which is now a ski resort. It's a, pl a place to play in Israel. There's skiing there. Winter skiing. Because he went to that place of wickedness and said, upon this rock, upon me, upon the church, upon the wickedness, those filthy rulers, I will build my church. And nothing's going to prevail against it. Nothing stopped his resurrection. Nothing can stop us from doing better, becoming more like God. Nothing can stop it. No. You have the victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. Yes. Ephesians 6. Only because our Lord went to Mount Hermon. Yes. Bye. Have a blessed day. Overcome the wickedness in the world. Don't let it settle around you, on you, near you, in your ear, your eye, any form. Guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus.